Hi, my exquisite listener. It gives us great joy to come your way today. We are pleased to welcome you to Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. A-W-R, Ghana, Voice of Hope. Voice of hope. This is Daylight Magazine. On today's program, we have live songs, biblical analysis, and the moment of truth. I am your presenter for today's program. My name is Jeffrey Agbodo. It is now time to listen to a delightful song.
Yes, I will always praise my maker for he provides me with all that I need. That is the meaning of the song. You are currently hooked on to Daylight Magazine, coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. Throughout life... Man has gone through different phases of realities and experiences. Out of these experiences, the Christian is drawn closer to God. To draw lessons from Christian experiences, sit back as we present to you Biblical Analysis. You're welcome, beloved, to Biblical Analysis. We are talking about fasting, and we are grateful to God for giving us two gentlemen to come help in the discussion. The first is Pastor Josiah Ando, and the second is Dr. Gabriel Insia, both lecturers at the Valley View University. My name is Andrew Boatim Bexen. Pastor Ando, what are some of the reasons for fasting? People give various reasons for fasting, but of course the prime and the very basic one is for religious purposes. Mm. Christians have examples of um, earlier patriarchs and leaders in the Bible who went through the ritual of fasting. But generally speaking, some people even fast because they don't have enough food and so they have to ration their eating style. Some fast because they are on a weight management program Mm -hmm. and so they don't have to eat at certain times. Those are not religious though, but they are also regarded as fasting. But then the basic one is for religious purposes. Now, many people fast and do it alongside prayer. And some also have a regular form of fasting. Oh, I want to fast every Friday of every week or the first day of every month. People have that kind of regular cycle. And so whether there's a reason to fast or not, they will fast. But then the one that normally occurs is when there is a pressing problem by particular Christians. They think that because of Jesus' comment after healing the demonic boy, that this kind does not go except by fasting and prayer. People think that there are some serious issues that need fasting alongside prayer to get off. Doctor, so I will probably summarize the reasons in three ways, right. which is spiritual, physical, medicinal or medical reasons okay spiritual i want to fast because i want to get connected to my god there are so many reasons why christians want to fast do i want to stay connected am i in some kind of challenges that i want my god to step in and perform a miracle in my life am i involved in some sin that i'm kind of grappling with that i want the lord to exercise absolute control over me and give me the strength to overcome it for these reasons, I may decide to fast to stay spiritually strong and stay connected. And so I would say spiritually, fasting gets things done. It is through fasting that Daniel had his vision. And then through fasting, Moses received the Ten Commandments. All right. There are other biblical examples where people fasted and get things accomplished or done. And so spiritually, we fast to get things done. And then on the physical aspect, we can also do fasting in order to stay 
strong and healthy. At times we've been eating and eating and eating, and just piling garbages all the time. Mm-hmm. So at times you want to kind of offload the system, let the system be empty, let some air kind of blow through <laughs> <and> the <laughs> stomach so you can stay through that. Yeah. And you may have some problem with your weight and so on. And as a result, you want fasting so that... Uh, You can cut down on your diet and uh, lose some weight and uh, physically be fit. And medically, fasting has also been scientifically proven to uh, be so powerful in terms of healing. It is a surgery on its own. There are so many diseases cured through fasting. And don't wonder why at times when we go to the hospital, we are advised by doctors to do some fasting. If they want some medical examination done, they will tell you to abstain from food for some time. And then they could get to the source of that problem. And prior to surgery, you may be asked to abstain from food. Mm. So for medical reasons, we can also fast. But uh, within the Christian context or spiritually, we do fasting to really stay connected to our God and get things accomplished. Right. After fasting, what do we gain? Generally, the reasons why we fast. Mm -hmm. I think we gain all that. (laughs) For instance, somebody who decides to reduce his or her weight yeah. by fasting, I think gets some pounds off. And for Christians who fast to get some things accomplished, mm-hmm. through prayer, you get serious challenges. So when Jesus Christ was to begin his ministry, he started it by fasting. And as Pastor indicated, we have examples of serious accomplishments that came about as a result of fasting. fasting. In fact, in my personal life, there have been some obstacles that I have been able to kick off because I added fasting with prayer. That's one big testimony we're having today. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, the thing is that fasting really does good. Right. Anything else, Doctor? Yeah. We stand to gain spiritual I mean, strength out of that. And then physically, we can uh, be healthy. And medically, too, we can experience healing through fasting. Well, all too soon our time is up, whilst we're still enjoying today's topic. God willing, we'll have a continuation of this. I've been talking with Pastor Josiah Ando and Pastor Dr. Gabriel Insia, both from the Valley View University. My name is Andrew Boatin Bexin. God bless you. You are currently hooked on to Daylight Magazine, coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. A-W-R, Voice of Hope, we will bring you joy, keep hope You've been listening to the Daylight Magazine coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. If you need further information or study materials on issues we have discussed, please contact us on Adventist World Radio Ghana, Valley View University, P.O. Box AF595, Adenta Accra, Ghana, West Africa. Or if you have access to the Internet, send us an email through radio at vvu.edu.gh. Or better still, you can call us on plus 233-307-051-058. If our line is busy, don't give up. Keep trying, for we are expecting your calls, emails, and letters. Yeah.
are possible and without God we can't achieve anything meaningful. For this reason it is prudent to listen to and apply the word of God in our lives. Please let's listen to the word of God on moment of truth. My dear listener, I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is something very important that I want us to look at in the Holy Bible. And I am taking it from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 9. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 9. Before I read it, the topic that I want us to look at is how to be a child of God. How to be a child of God. Matthew chapter 5 verse 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. From this, we have a very straightforward answer to the question that I pose. How can I be the child of God? I can be the child of God by being a peacemaker. Because he says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. So I can be a son of God by being a peacemaker. This part of the Bible is part of what we call Jesus' sermon on the mount. He started from Matthew 5. We are told that he saw the crowds. He went up a mountain. He sat down. His disciples came to him. And then he began teaching them. He began preaching to them. Blessed are the 
poor in spirit, DS is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the Pure in heart, for they will see God. And then we come to verse 9, where he says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. The question that I want to pose to you is, are you a peacemaker? If only you can answer yes, then you are a child of God. Because he says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. The word blessed used here has a deeper meaning. Macarius, happy. It means you will have all the blessings of the Lord. You will be a happy man if only you are a peacemaker. And your happiness is in the fact that you will be called a child of God. The question then comes, who is a peacemaker? When do we call you a peacemaker? I have tried to identify about four traits of a peacemaker. And in fact, these traits, I have identified them in the negative. Therefore, the traits that I will mention, if you have them, then you are not a peacemaker. One of them is greed. Greed. If you are a greedy person, you cannot be a peacemaker. When you see that there is something good, you want to Pull all to yourself. That is greed. And once you have that character within you, once you always want to get everything for yourself, when somebody has it, that person is not fit to have it. It is always you. You must have it only for yourself. You are greedy. And so you cannot be a peacemaker. Therefore, you cannot be a son of God. Greed is a terrible trait. For anybody on this earth to have, just do not be greedy over anything and then you will be a peacemaker. The second thing that one will have that will disqualify him or her from being a peacemaker is lust. Lust within you. Lust of the things that you see. Lust of the things that you feel within you. The things that you smell. When I talk about lust, it has to do with a whole lot of things. You see something and you must have it. That is the way you feel. You feel something within your body and you feel like it must be yours. You see a pretty woman and you feel like you must have her. A handsome young man and you feel like you must have him. Lust for money, lust for anything that you see. That will actually disqualify you from being a peacemaker because your lust will lead you into something that will not make you a peacemaker. If you do not have this lust, oh, you will love another person. You will want to make sure you suppress your feeling. You will want to make sure you suppress what you want for the benefit of another person. And in that case, we will call you a peacemaker. And the Bible says, blessed are you because you will be called a son of God or a child of God. Another trait that a peacemaker should avoid is selfishness. A peacemaker should not be selfish. Selfishness has to do with wanting everything, thinking only for yourself, thinking only about yourself. If um, your company is sharing something for everybody, You will wish everything is yours. You will wish that another person will not have it. You are always thinking about yourself. You are self-centered. You are selfish. Be selfless. Think of the person near you. And that is what makes you a peacemaker. Somebody who is selfish will not try to make peace with some people who are fighting. He will say to himself, well, it doesn't concern me. Let them fight their fight and let me live in my peace. Yes, you may be living in your peace, but you are not a peacemaker. The last trait I want to mention and a very dangerous one is hatred. 
if you are a human being and you want to point to someone and say that I hate this person, I am at loggerheads with this person, you are not a peacemaker. Hating somebody from the bottom of your heart for no cause. Sometimes you see somebody and the size of the nose alone will make you hate him or her. You cannot be a peacemaker because one day you will be fighting that person you hate. Because you will find that person in trouble and you will not attempt to help him or her. Just be a peacemaker. Avoid greed. Avoid lust. Avoid selfishness. Avoid hatred in your life. And you will be called a child of God. How can I be a child of God? I can be a child of God by being a peacemaker. I can be a child of God by avoiding greed, lust, selfishness and hatred from my life. And I will be called a child of God. My dear listener, I know you can be a child of God. I believe you are a child of God. Just take away greed. Just take away lust. Take away selfishness. Take away hatred for your brother or for your sister. And automatically, you are a child of God. Because by taking away these things, you are a peacemaker. And a peacemaker is always called a child of God. I want to pray with you. Father, we thank you so much for this time. I want to thank you for my listener. Make all of us peacemakers. Help us as we strive to be your children. Amen. This has been Pastor Josiah Ando. You are currently hooked on to Daylight Magazine, coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. A-W-R, Ghana, Voice of Hope. You've been listening to the Daylight Magazine coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. If you need further information or study materials on issues we have discussed, please contact us on Adventist World Radio Ghana, Valley View University, P.O. Box AF595, Adenta Accra, Ghana, West Africa. Or if you have access to the Internet, send us an email through radio at vvu.edu.gh. Or better still, you can call us on plus 233-307-051. 058. If our line is busy, don't give up. Keep trying, for we are expecting your calls, emails, and letters. Today's program was presented by Jeffrey Abudu. Stay blessed.